Hey, kids, how would you like to hear this on the screen instead of the great show you came to see? That's what you sound like. Honest. Please cooperate and do your part in keeping this theater quiet so everyone, including you, can enjoy it. I remember lots of adults and kids, too, paid admission to enjoy the show. We must insist on absolute quiet. Otherwise, we will be forced to evict all disturbance makers from the theater. Thank you. <laughs> So what's this movie about, man? Oh, it's about all kinds of things, man. It's like a bunch of crazy movies that they put together. It's like, like the Incredible Shrinking Man versus the Fifty Foot Woman, and then try to get it on. No, man. Remember all those movies about brains? That's what it's about, brains. Don't listen to them. Come on, I'm the one plugged in. Let me tell you what it is. It's youth. It's fun. It's everything you, the audience, is about. And there's dirty parts, too. This movie is about movies that have scary monsters in them. And the monsters go and they smash you. And they get you like that. And then a great big alligator comes and gets you right by the throat in this movie like that. And you can't get away. in an orderly fashion towards the city. We repeat, move towards the city. Keep calm. Take shelter in basement. Take shelter in basement. Please evacuate the villages and the countryside. Do not bring valuables. They will only slow you down. Are you sure it's this way? But, Pink, I, I was almost sure that it was. <laughs> What do you think will be the next obstacle the Earth people will put in our way? Well, as long as they can think, we'll have our problems. I want my money back. Sound of an angry bull gorilla. If you hear that noise, 
noise anywhere in the immediate vicinity, use common sense and protect yourself as much as possible. The key is never to panic. Remember, it is imperative you dispense of all fruit, especially bananas. And if there's a gun in the house, get it. But for God's sake, stay away from closet. Who's there? It was the white gorilla, the outcast, the scourge of the jungle. My gun had jammed. I backed away. He came at me, closer and closer. When he jumped me, I thought it was the end. me with his brute strength and ponderous weight. Suddenly, something caused him to stop. This is from the film Robot Monster. They couldn't afford a whole spacesuit, so the monster ended up to be a gorilla with a porthole on his head. of Earth by alien forms. His goal, to record the grim details of the invasion for future civilizations. Hey, Starlog A-10, day three. Hello and good morning to you. On this cloudy Thursday, Danny Diamond here, the Diamond Stud at Drive Time Hour, at the scene of last month's big battle for Toledo. <laughs> it's humid out there. That nuclear waste really holds the moisture, doesn't it? Sneaking in along the river this morning, I stopped for some decontaminated water and I almost tripped right over an alien cruiser. So I know that we are in for a kooky day. You know... Boy, that was a close one. May have to switch locations tomorrow. The ships seem to be moving back in this direction. Attention, people of Earth. I am Ambassador Phantom from the planet Krankor. At this moment, I am rapidly approaching your planet. You will tell me then whether you prefer to surrender or die. <laughs> Every
everybody. Listen carefully. The Martians are coming this way. We must evacuate the city. However, parochial schools will remain in session. Flying saucers have invaded our planet. Look, we're being attacked by hostile pipe welders. To those of you still listening, follow these instructions if you can't get underground. Cover yourself with wet newspapers and lie still until the blast has subsided. Now the weather. High winds expected from all directions. Everybody out of here! Everybody out! The Air Force will take care of these babies now. Dr. Forrester, get out of here! Everybody out of here! Everybody out! <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Drew Pearson. We bring you this special radio television broadcast in order to give you the very latest information on an amazing phenomenon. The arrival of a space ship in Washington. The rumors of invading armies and mass destruction are based on hysteria and are absolutely false. I repeat, these rumors are absolutely false. <laughs> Since our tenure on Earth will be for only 24 hours, do not repeat. Do not eat any of the Earth food. How about these aliens using mannequins as speed bumps? I didn't think I had that much to drink. <laughs> We throw a dog a bone. We don't turn him into bones. Here we see the efficiency of America's armed forces in the course of a major stress situation. Meet major stress. Well, when did you decide that? At exactly 0400. Let's have it. It's just three words. I didn't ask for a word count. Give me the message. You won't believe it. We've checked and double-checked. It keeps coming up the same thing. Colonel, the message is, Mars needs women. <laughs> tell you what is happening to those left behind. I'd like you to meet Mr. Spock's brother, Shecky, and his wife, Shelley. The lucky ones are dead. Of the others, some will go mad. The others will slowly rot away and die in gradual agony. It means that we are extinct as a race, unless, of course, we can find some good breeding stock and repopulate our planet. Yeah, the aliens came in all shapes and sizes. Short, tall, thin, fat, horny. I understand that this is a good specimen, Nadia. Come toward me. Now, move back. Of course, this chick went on to become Miss Uranus, 1964. Turn around. have done well, Nadia. Come on, Pepper. Look at me. I'll be over in a skunk by radiation, man. It's me. I gotta get something to eat. 
I haven't had supper yet. Hey, well, hurry up, man, because I don't want to miss the part where it goes through the radiation cloud, man. Can I have some Jordan almonds, please? That's really cool, man. It goes through the cloud and you go, like that. <laughs> and some M&Ms. Okay, let's go, man. Come on. And some chocolate peanuts. Man, your teeth are going to fall out, man. And a crispy bar. Oh, shit, man, I don't want to miss anything, man. I've only seen this picture 19 times, man. <laughs> And, uh, That's cool with the giant spider chases it, man. It's our treat. It must have been a real cheap movie, man. You know what they used for a spider man? Had a hairball with a little pipe cleaner sticking out for legs. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, packed of jujubes. Uh, man, you shouldn't have smoked that last joint, man. man. Uh, and some chocolate raisins. Oh, and some plain M&Ms. Hey, man, I'll meet you inside, okay? Yeah, okay. And a box of Cracker Jacks. And a, a big twist. And a package of Fritos. No, and the big twist. And the Fritos. And some popcorn. No, that's the baby size. With the mom. Well, give me the daddy size. Yeah, he's got a bigger size than that. You are getting smaller. I, I don't profess to understand it, Mr. Carey. Have you been exposed to any type of radioactivity in the past six months? Oh, no, of course not. I don't come in contact with anything like that. I work in a natural... Scott, wait a minute. That day we were on the boat. The boat? Uh, Charlie's boat, remember? Well, yes, I remember. The mist. That mist. I said, I've canceled our phone. They're going to try to get us an enlisted line sometime next week. What do you mean they're going to try? Well, they're, they're just going to try, honey. There are a lot of people waiting for enlisted lines. Didn't you tell them who you're married to? The incredible Scott Carey, the shrinking freak? Shrinky man's down real little. He's being chased by this cat, man. <laughs> He's gonna eat him, man. <laughs> it's a screen history, man. First time a guy's been eaten by a pussy, man. Plutonium blast. <laughs> That's a great joke, isn't it, Sergeant? <laughs> they call this living. <laughs> Glenn Manning is growing from 8 to 10 feet a day. The moment, he's 18 feet tall. Tomorrow, he'll be 26 feet. The next day, 35, maybe 40. And the next day... But you've got to stop it. Miss Forrest, we're trying. Believe me, we're trying. I should never have lived through that blast. You're alive, Glenn, and as long as you are, there's always hope. You know what they wrote about me in the college yearbook? A man most likely to reach the top. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. I know it is. The doctors are working night and day to find a cure. I just don't want to grow anymore. I don't want to grow anymore! Except maybe some hair. going so well, is it? Doesn't he have any relatives? Charlie! Charlie! It's a white sheep right on the cloud looking for you. Come on, I gotta get Janet. Not at all. me out there, she'll kill me. She's free. She's got Harry! Oh, 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 oh
hand job coming up. Are you going to stand by and let him destroy property? You do think you can save him? It may stop his growth, but it won't diminish his size. The stimulation of the hormone secretions in the pituitary or growth-controlling glands will take care of that. You know, it doesn't sound practical, Eric. I, I don't think it'll work. Here, take a look. Try to believe, but it worked. I hate to be the one to make him pull his pants down. We have to penetrate the bone in the first injection. I doubt if we'll get a second chance. You ready? One, two, three. One man who usually gets singled out when people talk about third or fourth rate movies is Ed Wood. The man who brought you such classics as Glenn or Glenda and the science fiction epic Plan 9 from Outer Space, which could have used this flying saucer here. As a matter of fact, I'd like to present a salute to Ed Wood, a true master of the B-movies. Well, the movies. You judge for yourself. Plan 9 from Outer Space was Ed's science fiction epic, made for about $37. When it comes to low-budget thrillers, Ed Wood stands alone at the foot of the heap. You have your report? We had to pull in here to Space Station 7 for regeneration. We're returning to the planet Earth immediately thereafter. What plan will you follow now? Plan 9. It's been absolutely impossible to work through these Earth creatures. Their soul is too controlled. Watch this guy pick up a script and read. Plan 9. Ah, oh, yes. Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. Ed wrote all the dialogue himself. Here's an innovative, dramatic use of the word there. But there's something in that cemetery. And that's too close for comfort. The saucers are up there. And the cemetery's out there. But I'll be locked up in there. Now, off to your wild blue yonder. Check the expensive set. That's a dime store shower curtain separating the cabin from the cockpit. And this is our first glimpse of the flying hubcaps the aliens flew in on. Well, that's nothing from this world. Amazing. You can hardly see that string. Ah, Bella Lugosi, the star of the picture. Unfortunately, he died two days into filming. So Ed tried to pass off his wife's chiropractor as Bella Lugosi's double. Sure, he was a full head taller than Bella, but as long as he kept the cape over his face, Ed figured the audience would never know. That was a close one. Now here's an actor who really knows how to use a gun. Is he dead? Yeah. He's messed up as bad as those two back there. Suppose that saucer or whatever it was had something to do with this? Your guess is as good as mine, Larry. One thing's sure. Inspector Clay's dead. Murdered. And somebody's responsible. You're in charge now, Lieutenant. Yeah, guess I am. Tell him he gets her. Back up the car and down the radio. 
Tell the coroner he's got to make another trip out here. Stop him, Tanner. He's close enough. Turn off your electrode gun. No! No! Stop him, Tanner! I can't get it. It's jammed. Stop him, you fool! Drop the gun to the floor, Tanner. You better go break contact. <laughs> Close. Was all you of Earth are idiots. You see? You see? You're stupid minds. Stupid. Stupid. That's all I'm taking from you. Get back here, you fool! Let him finish. Because of men like you, that all must be destroyed. My friend, you have seen this incident based on sworn testimony. Can you prove that it didn't happen? Glenn or Glenda was a sensitive portrayal of one man's search for his true identity. Would you be surprised in order to rough, tough individual who is wearing pink satin undies under his rough exterior clothing? He is. This person is a transvestite, a man who is more comfortable wearing girls' clothes. Not only did Ed write and direct this one, he also started it. One might say, there, but for the grace of God, go I. Glenn is engaged to be married to Barbara, a lovely, intelligent girl. The problem, Glenda. Glenn's other self, the girl that he himself is, his other individual personality. Glenn has decided to tell Barbara of his dual personality, to tell her of the nighties and negligees, the sweaters and skirts, the robes and dresses, the stockings and the high-heeled shoes, the wig and the makeup, all that goes to make Glenn into Glenda. His hands move to caress the smooth material of her Angora sweater which he has so long and so desperately wanted to put on his own body. He tells of this to her, and she looks to the sweater and to his hand. Then, when it is all over and that much of the story he knows is told, Barbara is not sure of her own thoughts. That's about it, darling. I wanted to tell you for a long, long time, but just couldn't bring myself to do it. I'm too much afraid of losing you. Oh, look at the motivation, the deep concern, the confusion. Uh, marvelous performance. Brilliant. Outstanding. Glenn. I don't fully understand this, but maybe together we can work it out. Can you possibly say or do to talk to top something like that? I don't know. We can't top it, John, but we must make people more aware. You're right. A remake. That's exactly what I was thinking. But how? Climb on. Maybe we can work it out together. Thank you, Dan.
Hello, young lovers, whoever you are. We're glad the love bug caught up with you, but we must insist that you do not allow his bite to affect your conduct while in this theater. Public demonstration of affection will not be tolerated. Enough said? I dreamed of starring in a big, wonderful Hollywood musical. Because musicals take you to a nicer place where handsome people sing and dance and fall in love and never have to work or buy food. Everything is beautiful and possible. And everybody lives happily ever after. And there's nothing humdrum or phony or corny or pissy or pissy. is from the award-winning film Bury My Heart at Radio City Music Hall. Indian maid, little white dove, was of her name, such a lovely sight to see. But they're tried, but with each other, so their love could never be. scene was definitely inspired by Casablanca. She's more than beautiful, he's more than handsome, and she plays piano with a slow right hand. Strange pursuit, the pursuit of love. You're not mine to hold, and I want the joy Everly Brothers' other brothers, Chip and Emil. was a remarkably talented guitarist. Unfortunately, Emil suffered from a slight muscular disorder. And here's one of the great precision dance numbers of all time. Only this poetic innocence of movement could make a bunch of bananas ripen like that.
the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hello. I'm the manager of this theater. At this very moment, I can see you out there. I know exactly what you're doing. I'm watching your reactions, keeping track of what candy sells best, and memorizing seat locations of the weirdos who are doing sick things to their neighbors. I put this in myself. Oh, everything seems to be... The, the guy in the green jacket in the back row! Get on his ass there! That's... Oh, that's disgusting. Get him out! Get, leave, leave the two girls. They're fine. Oh, that is too good a mess. I try to keep a clean movie house here as much as possible. None of this derelicts drooling and groping in the back row shit at one of my theaters. Mm-mm. Look, I'm your friend. I'm here to please you. Trust me, I know what you want. The previews, the coming attraction. Incredible is the word for the world's first monster musical. See in magnificent Eastman color the daring, dancing, enticing, and horrifying. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. Who is the woman branded in birth wearing the ward of horror? The world's first monster musical. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. And now, if you dare, Look into the hypnotic eye. No one was safe against it. The house on Haunted Hill, where so far the ghosts have murdered only seven people. So won't you come and make it eight? You'll see human heads without bodies. Oh. Mysterious pools of blood dripping from the ceiling. Oh. Hurry, or you'll be late for your own funeral. A beautiful, innocent girl on her honeymoon. Her passionate dreams of perfect romance turned into a living nightmare. The man she had loved was merely the hollow shell for the invaders from outer space. Was it true? Could space monsters mate with Earth women? <coughs> See the startling answer to the shocker of the all. Could she touch the body of this masquerading alien who wanted to learn the secrets of human love? Your race has no women. It can't have children. It will die out. Eventually, we'll have children with you. What kind of children? Space children, spreading a network of terror through a top-secret missile base in a nation's desperate hour of decision. Space children, the dangerous pawns of a power so strange that no sentries can stop them. No army can destroy them. <laughs> Get out of there! Black Belt Jones. <laughs> the fastest, meanest, baddest mother ever to hit the big screen. He's quick, he's black, and he's back. Get ready for the punchingest, pickingest, choppingest dude on earth. Right on. The movie that grabs you and never lets go. Attack of the killer tomatoes. Attack of the killer tomatoes. They'll beat you, pass you, squish you, mash you, chew you up for brunch, and finish you off for dinner or lunch. Look at the jar of tomato, Martha. I didn't know they'd grown so big, Jess. I wonder where he's going. He got little Timmy. Poor He ate him all up. From 
from the official files of the California Department of Education come these true tales of High School Patrol. Four, one, two, three, here, turn four, turn four. Lock out possible exits to the whole rec rooms. Rapid marijuana use has been reported in this high school. Turn four, turn four. Want to call for some backup, get some black and whites in here right away. I'll tell you, these smart nosed teenage hoods, you got no respect for authority and law and order. Looking for kicks, anything for kicks. Do anything for kicks. Drive a car off a cliff, beat up an old man, they don't care. All right, tell 4, 10, 4, 2150 here, these JDs and their broads. These damn broads rubbing up against these kids, making them crazy. All right, 10, 4, 10, 4, I want all these lockers secured, you got me? I got the suspect locker right here, number 2452. I'll take care of it. Look at them, dancing on the couch on the tables. These punks got no respect for good furniture. This music makes them nuts. Now we need an organized resistance to this vulgar, lewd, rocking and rolling. This is a story of violence. A violence born of the uncontrolled passions of adolescent youth and nurtured by this generation of parents. Those who, in their own smug little world of selfish interests and confused ideas of parental supervision, refuse to believe today's glaring headlines. But it has happened. Only the people and places have been given other names. Yeah, go ahead, let them kill each other. I swear it, I love it when chicks fight. It gets me hot. There's nothing like a good cat fight. How did it go at school today? What? If you'd rather have coffee, Tony, there's a pot of fresh. No, thanks. I think I'll cut out and size up this Townsville. You looking for excitement? Why not? I'm a citizen. It must be tough being a 35-year-old freshman. I used to think of you running around all by your lonely. Yeah, hey, I'm a big boy now. I even go out with girls. <laughs> mm. That's why I worry. Thinking of you coming up against those young, tight sweaters. Oh, nice kiss, buddy. What are you trying to do? Suck her ribs up her neck? Thank you, Tommy. enough to get married? Yeah, both as solid as a new dollar. Sally, that first baby didn't hurt you a bit. You can have a dozen more if you want to. And Bob, you'll be pleased to know that there's no trace of your old VD. 100% cured. What did you say about a first baby? Sally, you never told me you'd been married before. Doctor, what did you call it? VD? You mean to say that Bob has actually had one of those horrible diseases? That isn't true, Doctor. Is that true, Bob? Just a minute, Sally. One scandal at a time. When were you married before? I wasn't. But the doctor said you'd had a baby. That's right, I have had a baby. You mean it was illegitimate? That's right, illegitimate. And now will you please tell me what the good doctor meant when he mentioned your old VD? All right, if you must know, I did have it. But it's no worse than having an illegitimate child. I think it is. Why, I, I'd sooner marry a leper. Why, of all the unreasonable, little Miss Purity. Hats yourself a baby out of wedlock and then plays holier than thou. Fine attitude. Thank you for letting me know about this in time, Dr. West. And now I'm going out into the clean, fresh air. Well, there went my happy wedding right out the door. I'm terribly sorry, Bob. You think these kids would appreciate a nice house with carpeting and silverware and nice plates? Nah, they're lunatics. It's kicks they're after. That's all they care about. Round up the parents and the kids. I want them all in cuffs. Give me some backup black and whites. All black and whites. Come in here. Get those black and whites in here. 10-4. 
Look at him jump, just like rabbits. Yeah, look at him shoot, just like professional marksmen. It, it ain't supposed to be this way. It's heavy. <laughs> I've seen this movie 23 times, man. <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> oh, wow, it's an eclipse. Hey, man. Hey, somebody just barfed on that seat, man. Oh, sorry, I didn't tell you about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's milk done. All right. All right. Excuse me. Somebody just barfed on that seat. Um, oh, oh, no. He, he, was just, he was just kidding. There's nobody barfed on that seat. Wait a minute. Come on back. Man, what'd you tell him that for? Well, didn't you say someone barked on the seat? Oh, shit. Incredible shrinking brain, man. God. Is it possible? What are you looking at, Doc? Skin tissue of the lizard. Cells seem to multiply like bacteria. They split every 22 seconds. Look for yourself. What does it mean they split? It means that there is no limit to the potential size of the animal. It grows continuously. What's life? Well, there must be some limit. The secret of continuous, limitless multiplication of living cells in ordinary animals. He was in his parking spot. <laughs> That's it, sneak up on him, man. That's a New York cop. Shoot first, ask questions later. Ooh, got him. Right by the head, man. Well, oh, that's going to be hard to swallow. Once more, a frantic pilot radios in a report on a UFO. A bird. A bird as big as a battleship, circling and preparing to attack the CAB. <laughs> Loose dentures. Oh, they got a right in the folks' stash. You know, it's good to get home safely with all the strange things going on around here. Oh, there's nothing to worry about, ma'am. You just be careful out in that fog. Thank you. Hey, lady, we got news for you. The old neighborhood ain't what it used to be. Don't go out into the fog. No, watch out for the fog. It's the attack of the 50-foot chicken wing. <laughs> program for an important announcement. The giant locusts have reached the Chicago south side and nearby suburbs. Do not panic. Do not panic. Not now. My husband's here. <laughs> Call up the manager, tell him you got roaches in your room. <laughs>
If you want it, one of right here. <laughs> hey, 50 foot woman, we got something for you, man. <laughs> hey, can you plug this in? You know, up until this point, there's been a lot of laughing and sneering going on directed at some of the films we've been watching. How you doing? And I gotta admit, I've been laughing a bit myself. The thing is, you got to keep an open mind about these things. Uh, most of these guys were working under a very tiny budget. Excuse me. And when that's the case, even the most fundamental things become difficult, if not impossible, like makeup and wardrobe. Just because you can't afford the best doesn't mean it's bad filmmaking. You'll back me up on that, won't you? But even on a shoestring budget, some of these directors came up with some pretty phenomenal effects. This is a gripping fight scene between Starman and a creature in Playtex living gloves. The stuntman trained for a week to learn to operate this suit. Missile to the Moon is best remembered for the most outstanding performance by a slab of granite. This is from Bride of the Monster, in which a man with a spaghetti strainer strapped to his head gets tortured by a photo enlarger on a microphone stand. You get these straps off of me. Let me loose, do you hear me? Lobo, yes, but he cannot speak. Lobo is mute. Because of the storm, I was afraid we are not going to have guests tonight. Here, Bella Lugosi discovers the screen's first hickey. Lobo! You have to rush with my patience! Hey, I 
just don't know what happened. We sprayed for brains just last week. Come on, honey. You want it and you know it. Now, don't be a brain teaser. Now, sever the spinal cord. That's good. Hey, nice shot. Way to slam dunk. Oh. Ah, just kick it around the room. It'll behave itself. Ah. Could it be this procedure? If I don't experiment, how can I hope to perform operations like the one you almost messed up? But I can't cover up for you anymore. The superintendent had it out with me. He thinks it's you who's been stealing those limbs from the amputee operations. So what if it is? I've got to have limbs for my transplant experiments. Well, you said test an experiment. Test an experiment. Yes, but limbs and organs taken from people. I've got to have them to work with. Sure, I've made a few mistakes. But I've learned from them. I've learned. What you see is real. What's done is done, and what I've done is right. It's the work of science. Transplant my head onto another body. I brought her back. She'll live and I'll get her another body. I can make her complete again. Only a madman can believe that she could ever be like before. Don't argue with me. I love her too much to let her stay like this. Max. Max, I'm here. Max, listen to me. We did it. We transplanted your head. We did it, Max. And everything is checking out properly. Max, it's going to work. I knew it would. My God, I knew it would. I can feel it. I can breathe with it. I can feel my hand. I, I think I'm moving it. I think I'm lifting my left arm. I am lifting it. I know I am. Max, we had to make a last minute decision. We had no choice. Is some kind of a joke? Who is it? This picture started the black street fad of wearing middle-aged white men. You get into more shit. I, I know you don't like to answer a lot of questions, but... But how did that happen? Oh, I'll tell you about that later. This is Max. He's a doctor. Nice to meet you. Does he talk? Sure he does. Don't touch me! See? Works every time. Honey, I was wondering, um, do you have two of anything else? Well, this is my favorite part, man. Light up, man. <laughs> you know, in the mood. Now we're talking. <laughs> Get a hold of yourself. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Quit that crazy laughing. Here, Burma, try one of these on your elbows. What are they? I don't know. We try Tony's giggle water. Let's try his giggle Discreetly smoke this joint. Right, he doesn't hold it in, he just blows it out. Good, <laughs> good.
Talk about going over the top, man. This guy should be arrested for overacting. Now, you can see the difference between a real cigarette and marijuana. And there'd be no mistaking the texture or contents if you were to handle them. The darker one has been rolled in wheat straw paper. In most of the reefers, a double thickness of paper is used. Now... In the language the addicts use among themselves, marijuana is referred to as Mary Jane, pot, weed, or tea. They never say to each other, let's smoke a marijuana cigarette. They say, let's turn on, or let's blast a joint. Hey, want some Mary Jane? Thanks, Hepcat. Oh, look at the buns on them nuns. Man, that swings. Hey, you torching up? Now look, don't be a dry kitten. We don't want to get caught with a reefer again. Hey, man. There's a lot of kids starving in Cambodia want that roach. <laughs> What are you trying to do? You trying to break up the furniture, school? Hey, Jack. I gotta crawl into the woodwork. Now, when we say we're gonna give you some head, we, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> Smell your clothes. You stink. I quit the clown. And I mean, I need some more M. I need some more M now. But tonight, those guys are gonna be screaming for it. Let them scream, Benny. You're through. Get out. I need some M, because I have to take a BM. <laughs> we are about to take you into the world of the LSD user. A world that to him is real, yet as terrifying and unreal as anything ever imagined. We call his trip of terror to fly a giant bird. your wings and fly. <laughs> They're making that 3D real, man. <sighs> Give me another hit, man. Maybe we'll see 4D. <laughs> man, you got a beaver to jump off the screen. When I was a really littler kid, I used to go see all these scary monster movies so that I could scream my guts out. here but but I knew that was just some kind of um, uh, jelly or something or like maybe they melted dots down he's not gonna be able to get that off 
That's just some phlegm or something. It will be all right now. I know it's working. Oh, those are just baby balloons with flashlights in them. I could use some coffee. I'll make some. Oh, thank, thank you, Madame. Bring me sugar. Oh, I'll never forget this one because my best girlfriend, Gail, she cried because it, it looked just like her dog, Sparky. Find the door. You all right, Doctor? He just ripped my trousers, that's all. <laughs> on his shoulder, like a little pal. I'm going to help you then. Oh, this is the burnt casserole man. They, they just made like a tuna noodle casserole and burned it up and then stuck it all over him. Hey, don't you know me? Chuck! Chuck! Don't you know me? Chuck! Chuck! He knew him. This is KTTV Studios in Hollywood to Mount Wilson. We are being attacked by the slime people. They have us walled in the city. If you have any information about this wall, please contact us immediately. If anybody's listening, this is no joke. I'm a Marine. I was fighting these slime people and was knocked out. I guess they thought I was dead and left me there. The slime people made a fog, and the fog turned to a wall. If anyone knows how to get through this thing, then... I'm sure that there's a few other people just like us that still have hope. Oh, we're clear. Stand by to pull up the winch. Hurry, Dave. I've almost got it. See? It's just a guy in a rubber suit with little fish gills stuck on him with, with crazy glue. <laughs> before it kills us all. You know where the Tavanga is now? Good, you two wait outside. My God, what is it? I call it, um, uh, this guy, a carpet monster, and eats up ladies, um, swallows them up, except for their shoes. It doesn't finish up their shoes. Because it probably pokes her throat. Oh, can't get her tush through there. Turn around. This part I got worried he's going to cut the guy's ear off or something. Come along, so my 
Thank mm-hmm. you.